Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming back, watching my YouTube videos. My name is Saima Nadeem. I'm a nurse from Pakistan, currently working here in the UK. In today's video, we are going to talk about what kind of healthcare questions, if you're going for an interview for a healthcare support worker, what kind of questions they can so ask. If you are a carer, if you are a healthcare assistant, if you are a senior carer, this video is for you. We are going to discuss all the interview questions that can be asked upon your interview. I've been part of the interview uh, interview team so i know how it goes and what kind of questions do they ask and then how you can excel your interview in first go so if you are interested in this video in this topic please watch the video till the end we are going to discuss each and every bit about the interview thank first you so thing much they can ask you in all the quest, uh, interviews the first thing they ask is about tell me about yourself so i have a homework for you now this is your job to pause the video and answer this question in your own way all right pause the video i'm watching you don't skip <laughs> i'm watching you so you need to pause the video and answer this question tell me about yourself the all right question they can ask you about tell me about your strengths your homework again pause the video answer this question and then i will give you my answer as well in your strengths you can mention all your good strengths and this can be about your uh, communication skills this can be about your way of talking this can be about your um, uh, 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 about you being a great team worker and also you can mention that you can reply to them in uh, you can um, answer this question saying that i'm a great team worker i know the hospital uh, hospital trust and values and i know how to work in a team i have good communication skills i'm confident into in my own exactly. ability you can also mention that i'm passionate about patient care and this is what i love to do Hi, all sir. right here is a tip for you when they ask you about tell me about yourself that is your time to sell yourself okay that is your first question and that you should do your best in answering your uh, in answering that question so you need to write it down all right uh, when you're preparing for interview make sure you write it down and then uh, make a good answer of that uh, like a, what would you tell if they ask you tell me about yourself so in tell me about yourself uh, you need to sell yourself right so you need to tell them about your uh, your name your qualification and you can always tell them that i'm a great team worker i love to care for the patients and i have good communication skills so basically here also you can mention your strengths all right when you mention your strengths here and if they ask you this question again nothing it doesn't matter you can still answer in in the same way in the in your strengths also you can say i'm confident i'm compassionate i love to care for the patients and i'm um, honest with my work and i know what i'm doing uh, so this is how you're going to answer this question and also uh, the next question they can ask you tell me about your weaknesses and weakness guys it's not me it doesn't mean that uh, you are going to tell them i'm weak in um, walking or i'm uh, weak in uh, performing my job no you're not going to tell these things all right these are your things these are the things you can more work on you are only going to tell them about uh, the weaknesses that are good one also so weaknesses but in a strength way so how are you going to tell them uh i mean to say is when you are giving them your weakness it should not be a weakness it should be a strength in 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 uh, uh, in the other in the other words so let's say let me give you an example you can tell them about a weakness you can tell them that uh, at times I, I i it's hard for me to say no to the work and it's hard for me to refuse if someone is asking me for help if my colleague is asking for my uh, for my help and it's hard for me to say no to them this is my weakness and sometimes uh, i have loads of things to do and i don't have time to manage so so this is my weakness this is the thing you can tell them and then they will think it is in they will think about it in a positive way this is the thing you can tell in my weaknesses all right i got a question from gbr this is a video especially for gbr for you you ask me that if someone if your colleague is behaving badly towards a client what be, what would be your action and what would you do in that situation so in order to answer this question you need to be very very honest with them and you need to say that if someone is behaving differently how, how what you are 
are going to do you need to tell them that uh, i need to stop the i need to stop that person behaving that way so first thing you are going to do is interrupt that person all right say excuse me all right and then you can apologize to the patient you can say i'm so sorry that um, i'm so sorry for this behavior and then you need to talk to that person that colleague of you in person saying that this is wrong you cannot do like this to you to the uh, to the client all right so first first point of action is saying uh, saying that i'm sorry i need to interrupt you for a while uh, can you please come with me this is the thing you are going to tell to your client uh, your colleague and to the patient you can say i'm sorry i'm so sorry for this behavior and that's it that then you are going to leave leave the situation you are going to leave the area okay and after that in private you can talk to the person you can say uh, i'm sorry but i think i think this is not the right way to talk to the patient uh, and then that's it you are not going to do more than that after that you need to re uh, you are not going to talk more than that to the client to the colleague all right because i don't want to have conflict i don't want you to have conflict with that person all right the next uh, next thing you are going to do is report it to your senior management team to your supervisor all right it is very important you cannot ignore this it is your responsibility to inform it to your nurse in charge and then nurse in charge later on can report it to your manager so it's up to the nurse in charge so first point of action i told you is that you need to interrupt you need to uh, stop it uh, stop it's happening at that time you need to stop um, uh, you need to stop the um, conversation if they are if they are saying no you cannot do that or you need to do it like this and you are rubbish or something like that if they are talking to the patient in a bad way it is your responsibility to stop the situation to stop their conversation and apologizing to the patient you can also tell to the patient i'm so sorry for this behavior if you want to report it if you want to report this misbehave you can report it online and the complaint section is called pulse but don't go don't go in where very detailed guy um, uh, gbr you don't need to go in very detail you are going for healthcare sport worker interview so you don't need to worry about this thing all right you just need to say that uh, i will interrupt the situation i will uh, apologize to the patient and then i will talk to my colleague that this is uh, not the way that uh, this is not the way of talking to the patient and it's uh, it's rude or it's uh, it's um, it shouldn't be like that and then later on later on uh, you can report it to your supervisor and it is your responsibility to report it and you should not ignore it okay you need to report it to your nurse in charge that's it that's it and also uh, this is the question uh, this is the answer for gbr's question I can also ask you about um, uh, um if if you are have if you have a patient who is being difficult what would be your action all right they can also ask you about this question they can ask you if you have a difficult question what would be your role so in this case if you have a difficult a difficult patient you need to uh, be very very confident in talking to them you need to listen to them this is very important for you you need to listen to them why are they being very difficult why are they being rude what is the root cause of this situation okay so it is your responsibility to listen to them listen attentively what they are saying and what is their problem all right so if you know the reason if you know the cause of their their uh, being upset they're being upset and um, then only you can answer their problem then only you can sort out their problem right so you need to listen to them attentively you need to find the root cause root cause of their being difficult and also a root cause of being them difficult and you also need to make suggestion you need to come up with the ideas or um, suggestions how you can uh, help them in sorting out that situation all right so is it difficult <laughs> is it am i explaining it in a difficult way i'm sorry so if you have a difficult patient you need to reply to them you need to answer this question if i have a difficult question uh, difficult patient i will uh, listen to them i will uh, listen to them attentively uh, of um, i will listen to the patient very attentively and i will try to find out the reason of them being difficult and why why they are being difficult is it me making them uh, very difficult 
difficult or uh, is there anything that upsetting them is there any treatment that is bothering them or what is the cause of that being upset of them being upset all right so you need to know the reason and then uh, your job is to listen to them attentively be confident and then come up with the suggestion or come up with an idea how to help them all my right. previous uh, video where i uh, i made a video about healthcare support workers interview questions in that video i mentioned about privacy you need to know what is privacy privacy is providing something uh, private care you know, or closing the curtains closing the door if you are doing any uh your personal hygiene if you are um uh if you are washing the patient or if you are um, giving them personal care so that is mean that is the meaning of the privacy so now they can ask you a question about um, if a patient if a confused patient is uh, standing in the corridor and then trying to remove his clothes what will be your action so you need to think about it before you answer it all right so your homework pause the video and answer this question you have uh, one minute all right so uh, i hope you are back so uh, in order to answer this question you need to know the situation all right so they have given you a situation you have a confused patient standing in the corridor and trying to remove his clothes so your job is uh, uh, try to calm the patient uh, and tell them that uh, tell them about the reorientate them tell them about the area that you are standing uh, tell them about the time place and uh, situation that you are in you can tell them uh, let's say mr a you are standing you are in the hospital and um, uh, you are standing in the corridor and it's not right it's not the right place to remove your clothes uh, let's go back uh, to the toilet or let's go back to the bed maybe you can change if you want to change your clothes or what you want to do and uh, you can ask them what they want to do and then you can help with them with that and then if they are very very confused they're not listening to you or uh, they are being very very agitated what you can do is you need to report to the nurse in charge or your nurse with you who is working with you you can tell that person that um and uh, that, that this person is standing there removing the clothes so you are not uh think 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 hold on hold on don't leave the patient there alone you need to be with the patient if they are very confused you need to be with them don't leave them alone they are trying to remove their clothes be with them and try to uh, try to stop them but not in an aggressive way uh, you need to be polite you need to be compassionate you need to be very very soft with them okay if they listen to you it's very very good and if you are uh, you are able to calm them down you are the best Best, all right and this is the way you are going to tackle that situation if you get a question like this they can also ask you a question about uh, let's say you are on duty and uh, you have a fall a one of your patient fell down so what will be your action guys uh in the in the nhs this is very 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 common scenario and then it happens all the time we have too many falls it happens all the time so you need to know how to answer this question so let's say if you have a fall what will be you what will be you doing if you have a fall if you see someone falling from the bed or in the corridor or in the washroom so you need to go to that person so you saw someone lying on the floor you are not going to lift them up you are not going to um uh you are not going to uh, uh, help them i mean you the first thing you need to do is look at them and ask them mr a are you okay what happened why are you lying on the floor and if they say i fell down uh, or then you you are going to observe them for any injury all right and then before that before that you need to press the emergency buzzer the first thing you need to do is uh, look at the patient ask them and then if they say I, I fell down you need to press the emergency button after that uh, the people will come the nurse the doctor everybody will come and then they can help you with the situation but as spot worker if you are alone there you press the emergency buzzer and now you it's your job to talk to the patient uh, mr a can you stand up can you go back to your bed and if patient gets up and go back to the bed well and good if not uh, the you have pressed the emergency buzzer already so people the staff will come around and they will help you and uh, they can uh, find the way how to uh, take the patient off the floor 
all right so what they usually do is uh, first thing they do is uh, uh, manual handling uh, first thing they do is ask the patient if they can uh, stand up by themselves very good if not if they, sometimes we use chair method also so the patient needs to be on their knees and they can uh, hold on to the chair and stand up and sit on the chair and uh, if if these things doesn't help, we sometimes uh, uh, we use uh, Hoover Jack and mat. Also, this is a uh, Hoover Jack mat is a is a is like an inflatable bed. So we put that bed on the floor and then we inflate it. And we, after after that, we put the um, uh, before inflating it, we put the patient on the on the on that uh, Hoover Jack and mat mat, and then uh, we inflate the mat and then we move the patient to the bed so the good thing about hoover jack mat is uh, uh it can reach up to the bed level we are going off topic i think <laughs> so if you see a fall my healthcare support worker this is your responsibility to say if i see a fall i will press the emergency button i will ask the patient if they can stand up or what happened to them why they're lying on the floor i will assess them for immediate injury and then uh, i will inform my nurse in charge i will inform my nurse and then uh, they will help we will help the patient go back to bed so why you are not going to lift the patient because if they have spinal injury if they have back injury or if they have hip injury we are not there to lift them up we will make the situation worse okay so you are not going to lift the patient please please don't do that and also ask you about uh, there is a patient who is uh, uh, very immobile that he cannot mobile and uh, he cannot walk around his assistance of two there is no one in the ward so how you are going to reposition that patient okay so you are alone there how are you going to answer this question pause the video answer this question are you back all right so you are alone in the world you are the support worker you're providing personal care and then you need to reposition that patient there is no one to help you what you are going to do you are not going to do it by yourself okay you need to wait for the help to come you need to wait for your nurse to come and do it with you manual handling is very very important when you join the trust they will provide you training they will uh, give you all the training how to turn the patient how to do it uh, with the uh, how to turn the patient who are assistance of two or assistance of three or how to do it alone okay but if the patient is assistance of two you cannot do it alone okay you need to wait for the help and then you need to ask your nurse to come over to reposition that patient why because if you are going to do it by yourself you may injure your back and you may hurt the patient as well so the, you need to respond i will wait um if the patient is uh, assistance of two i'll wait for some help to come i will not do it by myself and uh, i will follow the hospital manual handling procedure and guidelines on turning the patient okay next question they can ask you you are providing personal care and then you see a skin uh skin uh you, you see the skin of the patient and the skin is breaking down or there is a purple color and you are not sure about it what you will be do will you just leave it so the answer to this question is you need to pause the video and answer this question okay so the answer to this question is uh, if you are providing personal hygiene and then you see a purplish color on the skin of the patient or if you see an, a breakage or if you see something wrong on the skin you are not going to ignore it if you are not sure if you know what it is documented in the patient uh, intentional rounding if you are not sure report it to your nurse it is very very important because most of the times our healthcare support workers they provide patient care and then if i don't get a chance to see the skin of the patient if you if the support worker is confident enough they can mark it on the intentional rounding or else it is my responsibility as a nurse to check the skin of the patient as well as a, as the support worker also so if if uh, you are a sport worker you're not sure about that uh, skin uh, thing go and tell to your nurse that i'm seeing this purple um, purple band uh, on the on the skin of the patient uh, what is it and uh, they can inform it's it will be nurse's responsibility how to die how to mark it and how to um, um 
how to mention it on the intentional rounding but please as a spot worker you are not going to ignore it so this is how you're going to answer i will tell my nurse um, about it and if i'm if um, I will tell about it about, to my nurse and then also we will document it on the intentional rounding that we have seen it all right and also they can also ask you what are the pressure ulcers so pressure ulcers uh, are um, uh, pressure ulcers are the skin problems uh, what are the skin problems pressure ulcers are usually uh, like uh, damage to the skin this is called damage to the skin uh, due to uh, due to the patient being lying on the same side or for long uh, you know, if they are wet for a long time uh, they can develop pressure ulcers so basically pressure ulcers mean skin damage okay so if they are asking you what is pressure ulcer it's a skin damage uh, due to patient lying on the same side or um, incontinence or this can be due to many reason or friction this can be due to many many reasons so pressure ulcers are skin damages there are four categories grade one grade two grade three grade four this is how you can answer them and there is also unstageable pressure ulcers okay uh if you want to learn more about the pressure ulcers let me know in the comment section i'll make a separate video for that but they will provide you training on pressure ulcers also and trust me my healthcare support worker they are not going to ask you in detail about the pressure ulcers because mostly nurses they document it but uh in the training they will provide you a training for that okay the next thing they can ask you how to prevent a fall so how to prevent a fall you know this answer this question guys there are many ways to prevent a fall you can provide the uh, non-slippery socks to the patient non-slippery non uh, shoes to the patient uh, provide all the things uh, in their um, access uh, like all the belongings of the patient keep them in patient reach if they are using eyeglass give them their eyeglass or if they are uh, if they use reading glass if they are reading give them their reading glass or if they uh, provide the clutter free environment make sure there are no cables or wires or on the floor and uh, keep all the things in their reach this is uh, how you can prevent the falls and if the patient is high risk of fall in some words they provide wristband also uh, like yellow wristband so it will be obvious for the other people to know that this patient is for high risk of falls and also if they if you know that they are high risk of fall you need to provide them assistance when they are getting out of the bed okay so you can tell them that to prevent fall i can provide um, uh, non-slippery socks and uh, i can keep all the things in patient reach i can provide a clutter-free environment and if they are using hearing aids or eyeglass i can provide them those as well in order to prevent fall so this is your answer but not least they can ask you about tell me about the six c's of the nursing this question is very important and then they ask you they ask to everybody healthcare support worker and to the nurses also so six c's of nursing are very important in order to care for the patient six c's mean six c's c as charlie okay so these are uh, care compassion commitment courage competent and communication so you need to know all of these things all right so when you tell them about these uh, six c's sometimes they can ask you also about uh, tell me about a situation when you uh, when you deal with a difficult patient with your communication skills okay so it's the same question as like a difficult patient all right so if they say uh, tell me about a situation when you deal with the difficult patient with your communication skills so you can tell them any situation you can tell them about any situation any example and if you are not sure if you haven't had any example like that you can tell them that um, um, uh, I will talk to the patient in a confident way. Uh, I will listen to the patient attentively and then I will uh, discover what is their problem, why they are being difficult. And also uh, I will um, uh, I will give them suggestion and ideas how to, uh, how to, um, uh, I'll give them suggestion and ideas how we can help them uh, being relaxed and calm. All right, and then we can try to sort out their problem 
and uh, try to sort out also the the, the problem they are having okay and um, with the communication means that how you talk to the patient all right communication means how you to you handle the situation by way of your talking so if, if they say what is communication communication is exchange of words whether it's written or uh, or spoken so you can tell them that my aim is to talk to the patient nicely or um, my aim is to talk to the patient with respect with respect and dignity and uh, also with empathy and sympathy okay so this is all guys for this video and i wish you very very good luck and uh, gbr good luck for your interview tomorrow and i'm sure i'm sure the your job is yours okay so if, let me know in the comment section gbr how your interview goes and if this video helped okay so thank you so much guys for watching if you know someone who's preparing for the interview please share this video with them and uh, i want them to be uh, to benefit from this also and I, I want all of you here in the uk to help us and to take care of the patient to lower the burden of the nhs okay thank you so much for watching take care bye bye god bless